If you eat, let's say, raw meat, it will take anywhere between seventy to seventy-four hours for it to go through your system. If it's a creature which has some sense of thought and emotion, if it has emotion, then you should not eat it. Normally, first one, one and a half hours after eating, it tends to take the body down. After that, slowly, it recovers. If you look at the length of the aliment, you can only all the carnivorous animals, it could be anywhere between three to four times the length of the body of that animal. So, every life is happening the way it is happening because of a certain dimension of information or in modern terminology, let's call it software. There is a certain software, which is an arrangement of information. Now, the idea is, to eat as simple a software as possible. If you eat that kind of life, which is a very simple software, your ability to override that software and make it entirely a part of you is very good. As that software gets com complex, more yes. and more complex, yes. your ability to integrate it goes down. So especially if it's a creature which has some sense of thought and emotion, if it has emotion, then you should not eat it. This is the understanding. An animal which has any emotion, displays certain emotions, especially if it displays emotion which is near to human emotion, you should not eat it because it will not integrate itself, that animal nature will start manifesting itself. Or in other words, in India, today maybe in cities people do not know, you see in the villages, people have very intimate relationship with the cow. They have drunk the milk of that cow, their children are drinking the milk of that cow. There is a very deep relationship, if you do not know this, cow is one creature. If something happens to you and you are in some kind of grief or misery, you don't have to be near the cow. Wherever the cow is in your house, it will st it will start shedding tears for you. You know, I've seen this with my eyes, I couldn't believe. When somebody is dead in the house, it… what does a cow know? It is somewhere, simply tears flowing. So when it has such deep emotions, if you kill it, it's like killing a human being, it's murder or it's cannibalism. So because of that, this is not a faith thing, mm. this is not a religious thing. We thought this is a fundamental sense. Why… You see, when we are hungry, why can't I cut you up and eat you? What's wrong? So if you look at the human system the way it is, in the animal kingdom, you can largely divide animals either as herbivores and carnivores. There are of course mixed, but largely so. If you look at the basic physical structure of these two kinds of creatures, you will see there's a fundamental difference in the way their body is constructed. Particularly the digestive system. When we say a digestive system, from the lip to the anal outlet, digestion is happening at various different levels. This is called as the alimentary canal. To start with, the way our jaws and our mouth structure is, if you look at it, you must have noticed this. If you have a dog or a cat, if you've not seen tigers or lions, all carnivorous animals have only cutting action in their jaw movement. Yes? All the herbivores have cutting and grinding action. You? What do you have? <laughs> Hello? You have both cutting and grinding action. Why is this so? Because there are certain enzymes in your saliva that digestion begins for you in your mouth, not in your stomach. The more the food stays in your mouth, the better your digestive process is. Now that you ask the yogic thing, in yoga, in some systems of yoga, I don't go by these things, but I just… I want people to decide by the… by the texture of the food how much you do this, but there are some systems of yoga, if you don't know how to chew, they say every mouthful you must chew twenty-four times. That is twenty-four times you must do this. If you do that, at least thirty to forty percent of the digestion will happen in your mouth itself. Already it's been prepared. Now food is primed well in your mouth, 
when it goes inside, that is what the stomach is expecting, half-digested food, so that the rest of it can be done quickly. But today, most people are just gulping things down because you… with every food you're getting free coke so that you can take it like a pill. <laughs> you can gulp it in and gulp it in. If you look at the length of the alimentary canal, even if you look at the incisors, small arse, the way the carnivorous animals and the herbivores are made, your structure is all herbivore. If you look at the length of the alimentary canal in all the carnivorous animals, it could be anywhere between three to four times the length of the body of that animal. In all the herbivores, it's five to six times the length of their body. If you look at your own alimentary canal, it is anywhere between twenty-four to thirty feet. This means it is five to six times the length of your body. Why this is so is, if you eat any vegetable matter, let's go little slowly, if you eat, let's say, raw meat, it will take anywhere between seventy to seventy-four hours for it to go through your system. If you eat cooked meat, if you cook it well and eat, you are doing rare, all right, that's a different matter. If you cook it well and eat it, then it will take anywhere between fifty to fifty-four to fifty-six hours to go through the system. If you cook the vegetables and eat it, it will take anywhere between twenty to thirty hours to go through the system, depending on the type of vegetable and what how much fiber and other things. If you eat a raw vegetable, it will take anywhere between twelve to fifteen hours to go through the system. If you eat a fruit, it will take one and a half to three hours to go through the system. Any food which stays in your body for long periods of time is excessive bacteria in the system. You spend a lot of energy just to fight them down. And if it stays in the body, today there is enough medical science to tell you, in Ayurveda, in the eastern systems of medicine, whatever problem you go with, first thing is they'll purge you because a clean colon is a symbol of health. But the moment you're eating certain types of food, your colon can never be clean. There are issues and problems today. The amount of colon cancer, intestinal cancer is so heavy because one thing is they're eating food which is not suitable for the system, another thing is they're eating old food. When I say old food, almost anything, everything, if I walk into any store, what I see is any food you want to buy is at least a month or two months old. Still, in India fortunately, except in big cities, still if we want to buy a vegetable, it must be plucked today morning. It is plucked at six, six thirty in the morning, we cook at eight thirty, nine, bef when the vegetable is still alive, we want to eat it and it'll make a world of difference. Today people are talking about farmer's market, organic stores and works, but this is how the world lived thirty, forty years ago before you business guys. <laughs> totally messed it up <laughs> So those of you who… I know all this is not possible for everybody to maintain, don't go by what I say. Don't listen to anybody when it comes to food. Just learn to listen to your body. With what kind of food is your body most comfortable with? Not your mind, not your tongue. Your body should feel very comfortable. If your body is comfortable, one thing is it'll bring down sleep quota. If your lethargy goes down, if your sleep goes down, your agility goes up, your alertness goes up, this means the body is happy. The body is happy with the food that you're consuming. After eating the food, if you feel like this, unless you drink something caffeinated or sugar loaded, you cannot get up and do your work. If that is the condition of the body, this is not good for you, you should not be touching that. I would say instead of going by all kinds of prescriptions, there are simple ways that, not here but we could teach you, how to become alert to the food. If something appears on your plate, you must know whether this will go well with you or not. It's happened to me many times, I'm mean, always with food but I'm saying sometimes, uh, food has been laced with some poison or something. If it just comes before me, I just look at it and say, I'm not eating this, it's not good. Something is wrong with it, seriously. Simply because your body is capable of that. You just do one thing, throw something to your dog, not your pet dog, he's become like you <laughs> <laughs> If you… A, a dog which is free, 
If it is free, Brooklyn, there's still some dogs free. Free dogs are free. <laughs> They're hipster dogs, they got mustaches, you know. <laughs> if you throw something to him, one sniff, he knows whether to eat it or not, isn't it? How come you don't know? <laughs> You're supposed to ecologic… you know, in the evolutionary thing, you have the most sensitive neurological system. If you look at the food, you must know how this food will behave within me. Based on that, you can shape the markets of tomorrow, the business people. <laughs>